In this demonstration, I'll show you how to find the first and second derivative of a function. One thing to keep in mind is that if f, your function, is a differentiable function, then f prime is also a function. f double prime is defined as the derivative of f prime and is called the second derivative of f. Let's start with question one. This question asks, if y is equal to the square root of x plus 4x, find y prime and y double prime. We'll start off with y prime. Remember, this radical is the same thing as saying x to the power of half. So we can use the power rule to differentiate this, and we bring this half down, x, and we subtract 1 from half, which will give us negative half. And if we differentiate 4x, we end up with simply 4. So that's our first derivative. We'll move on to our second derivative now. In our second deriv derivative, once again, we're going to use the power rule here. So we're going to bring this value down, x, and we'll subtract that by 1. And if we do that, we end up with negative 3 over 2. The derivative of 4 goes to 0. These two multiplied together give us negative a quarter x to the power of negative 3 over 2, and there it is. Let's move on to question number 2. This one is slightly more complicated. If y is equal to sine 3x plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x, find y prime and y double prime. Let's start with y prime. The derivative of sine is equal to cosine. Now keep in mind that the angle is 3x. So let's find the derivative of sine, which is cosine. And I do have a video dedicated on finding the derivatives of trigonometric functions. I'm going to leave that 3x where it is. And now we're going to differentiate 3x and put it right beside cosine. Therefore, it becomes a product. The derivative of 3x is equal to 3. So that represents the derivative of that term. Plus here, you use the power rule, 3 times 2 is 6, x to the power of one, 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1, and therefore you see no exponent there, plus 2, remember, the, the power rule. And here you might find this one a little bit odd. Do not be tempted to use the quotient rule. Simply take this x and make it x to the power of negative 1, because x to the power of negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x. We can use the power rule simply for this. So we bring this 1 down, and it becomes negative 1 x to the power of negative 2. So that's the first derivative. Let's do the second derivative. Here we have cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So let's write down sine 3x. And remember, it's negative. So we have this 3 as well from the original. And once again, you have to find the derivative of 3x, which is equal to 3. So it technically becomes negative 9, which will simplify the next step. Plus 6, the derivative of this, plus 0, the derivative of 2. And here you have this 2 that goes down to the bottom, x, and we subtract that by negative 1. So we end up with negative 3. So let's simplify this mess here, and we end up with negative 9 sine 3x, 3 times 3 is 9, that negative, plus 6, plus, and keep in mind that there should be a plus there, so that goes to nothing. And these two multiplied give, give us positive 2x to the power of negative 3. So this highlighted expression represents the second derivative. Let's proceed on to our last question in this video. In this question, we are asked, suppose a car is traveling a distance represented s is equal to f of t, which is a function of time t, as given by s is equal to 5 t squared. What is the velocity? What is the acceleration? By finding the velocity, you are technically finding the first derivative. And by finding the acceleration, you are technically finding the second derivative. So let's start off with this very simple equation. The first derivative would be 
10 t and all I did was use the power rule and once again I'll use the power rule to find the second derivative which gives us simply 10 and if we were to graphically represent this it would look something like this where this represents 5t squared this represents 10t and this simply represents 10 so there you have it those are three solid examples on how to find the first and second derivatives. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.